know, on most. And they are very, very sweet, but they're expensive. Now, when I put out this for testing, I have people make this recipe and then use it in, uh, in foods that they knew backwards and forwards how their recipes work and to see if they could tell a difference. Not one. Not one. Like my sister-in-law that's in the second ward, she used it on her caramel corn recipe. She makes that a lot. And I had her you make the sweet condensed milk. She said you couldn't tell. You absolutely, there was no difference between how she'd made it every single time with a, with a can of sweetened condensed milk to when she made it with sweetened condensed milk, you know, that, she, that was homemade from powdered milk. And it's very easy. Anytime you want to save money and you don't want to buy it from the store, you have to realize you're in for a little bit more work. But it's, it's very easy. But it's not quite as easy as opening a can and dumping it in. Um, but you have your milk and you can put in, you know, and then you have some boiling water and you put in sugar and you put in a little butter so it has that fat and a little vanilla and you're good to go. It is, it is very easy. I don't know which, I don't remember if that recipe's on there. So. Yes. Okay. Well, there's other fun things you can do. Um, the hot chocolate mix, we love it. The, the secret to that was the little bit of cinnamon and the powdered vanilla. Okay, so anybody, we put that on the order form because there's several ways we can use this, and I'll talk about more of them in a few minutes. Um, pudding. Who's ever made pudding from scratch right on their stove with powdered milk? So easy. And you're missing all of the preservatives and all of those other things that you buy, that you use if you buy a store box, if you do the box. So there are lots of fun ways. You can make whipped topping. You can do buttermilk. There's a lot of things you can do with just your powdered milk. Where's the pudding mix? Oh, I don't know if it's on there or not. <laughs> well, we can put that one on the website. Um, okay, now we're going to take our powdered milk to a whole new level. Who's ever made yogurt from their powdered milk? Oh, we got a few. Okay, let me just tell you. If you can make yogurt, you've just opened a whole new door of items that you can use, you can make from your powdered milk. So I'm going to go briefly over how to make how, or how to make yogurt. It is not hard. It's not hard at all. Here's what you need. You need a pan, and I put in three and three quarters cup of water and a cup and a half of milk. And all you do is you stir that, whisk it up, and now if you're using fresh milk, which you can, you always want to take it to 180 degrees because it has competing bacteria. Now, you know the theory. I'll go, I'll go over the theory. Um, yogurt, what is so great about yogurt is you put in some active cultures. There's like acidophilus and bifidus. If you look, all of the yogurt companies will try and tap what cultures they have. That is all the good bacteria that we need in our bodies. So what we want to do is kill all the bad bacteria and the competing bacteria that might kill the good bacteria that we're going to put in. So we're going to heat our milk up to 180 degrees. Now, I've learned that is very specific for fresh milk, if you use any fresh milk. You don't need to go that high with powdered milk. Somebody told me that many times, and I said, I'm going to try it. I got it. it, 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 it. In fact, I liked it better when it wasn't, hadn't gotten so hot. I never wanted to boil. So you put your milk in here. You put three and three quarters cup of water, you put a cup and a half of the milk, and you just whisk it. I always whisk it. And then after you whisk it together, then you can stir it if you want. And you just stir it. I don't let it just sit. I never let milk just sit in the pan. But you just watch your candy thermometer, and when it gets up to 150 degrees for powdered milk, 180 degrees if you want to use any fresh milk or fresh cream. If you want Greek yogurt, you'll put a splash of cream and you might want to use like whole milk. You can make a fabulous Greek yogurt. But we're going to make a non-fat yogurt with our non-fat milk. So you take it about up to 150 degrees and then um, you have to let it cool because we're going to add cultures to this, but the cultures are a little bit finicky. They like to be at a certain degree. If they're too cold, they might die. And if they're too hot, they might die. And when you add the cultures and then you let your, your milk sit, they multiply, 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 multiply. And pretty soon, there's so many cultures that you have thick yogurt. This thing that went to really, you know, runny, just watery substance to make yogurt 
is going to be nice and thick. And that's because the cultures have multiplied and multiplied. Now, if you introduce any kind of a bad bacteria, if you use, if you stir it with a spoon that maybe was touched or left somewhere, you can introduce a bad bacteria and then sometimes, even after you've let it incubate, it's still water. So you just, you have to be a little bit careful, but it's not hard. So get it up to 150 degrees, and then you just let it cool. The temperature they love to be at is about 110. So that's why you have the thermometer, is you put it, at, uh, you wait for it to cool down to 110. Then it's perfectly ripe to add your cultures. Now you can add, a cult you can add cultures from either fresh yogurt, or you can do a yogurt starter. Has anybody ever seen this? You know, they're just freeze-dried yogurt cultures. And um, I used every last one making all this yogurt. They're just little pouches. You just cut them open. Now, when you're adding cultures, you don't ever want to add them just straight to your pan. It's much better if you can take, if you can have a little bowl and then ladle some into your bowl, mix your cultures separately, get them really well mixed, then dump that in your pan and stir it. And then you can take this, now that we've got all our cultures, I dump mine right into my yogurt maker. That yogurt maker will just keep it at the perfect temperature, and it's just perfect every time. But you don't have to incubate it in a yogurt maker. I just, for me, it's consistent, it works, I never have a problem. You can do them in your oven. You can pour these in mason jars. You can pour them in any containers. What you're going to want to do then is make sure you can put them in a place where they stay about 110 degrees. If you do them in your oven, you can turn your oven up. It usually goes down to about 170, and then turn it off. And then you can put your yogurt in and leave the light on. And if you just let it sit in there for about eight hours, it just multiplies. You have to leave the light on. And sometimes it gets so, it'll drop low enough that it won't be quite thick. Take them out, turn that oven back on, and then turn, let it preheat like 170, turn it off, and then you can put those in. You can, you can let it continue to incubate. Um, I've had people tell me they put it in the shade on, an, on a really hot outside day, and it worked. I mean, whatever you can do or you can think of to keep it at about 110 degrees, it'll just incubate. It'll just sit there and be all comfy. I would just think incubate. you could do it if you got it warm enough again or something. I would think you could almost do it in your wonder of it. Have you tried doing that? I haven't tried doing it in the wonder oven, but I've had people do it in a thermos. I've had people do it in their crock pot, and they put the jar in their crock pot, and then they fill it with water. And then the water gets to it to, to that degree and just keeps this little blanket around it. I know. It works really good in the dehydrators, too. And the dehydrators? And you can turn that down? Um, it doesn't matter where or how, as long as you can keep it for about anywhere from four to ten hours at that at that um, temperature, then those those little cultures, they just multiply and they're so good. So when you eat your yogurt, it is so healthy. It's um, important too to check your yogurt starter if you use it with regular because some of them only have two cultures in it. Some of them have you want five or six. a really good and like, yogurt start. Like Mountain High is really good, Brown Cow is really good, but yeah. like Yogurt Play only has like one or two, it's just not that great. Look but. for the cultures and I and I use Mountain High. Now if you're gonna use um, this one is the freeze dry culture and it's like it almost looks like yeast. You know, you when I when I ladle some out and then I sprinkle it in, you know, and I mix it up. It almost looks like a yeast that I put up in there. And then I'll pour it back in. If I do a yogurt, I'll do like a third to a half a cup of Mountain High. I'll put that in, stir the milk into it, and then put it in. Now, when you make yogurt, you can use that as a start for the next batch. But I've learned that that is always not quite as consistent. I always prefer a fresh store-bought yogurt or the yogurt star or the yogurt freeze dry. Now this had um, this will have usually about a one year shelf life. Well I shouldn't say shelf life, refrigerated shelf life. But when I open the package, they'll say this product will last about one year beyond the uh, expiration date printed on the box. And the reason they say that is because the FDA will only let them put a one-year shelf life on this. But they already know it will last at least two years. 
You do keep it in your